Here to start the preview for our October the 27th sale, let's start with one of two cars we have. This is a beautiful 1983 Mercedes hard top, soft top. Runs well, it's been kept in a garage or by a single owner. We also have, it's coming in tomorrow, a very large white with red leather interior Chrysler Imperial convertible. So go onto our website to view that one. We can't show it to you now. Now for a quick preview before our staff get more detailed in here in the reception. It's a bit topsy-turvy because we have so much stuff and it's early. We have a beautiful Florence Knoll grass front uh, sliding door cabinet with what we think is a Florence Knoll chrome mirror, rare mirror. We have French furniture in the sale as you can see with this beautifully finely carved French center table. We have Regency furniture. Here's just a few Regency chairs. Actually, while we're passing off note in our next sale is this magnificent bronze. We believe it's actually a fountain by an American artist called Gladys Edgerly Bates, or Gladys Bates Edgerly. Bruce will correct me on that one. Here we have a beautiful Ex Christie's uh, cellaret. They like these cellarets over in Ireland. The drink doesn't last too long, but they do like the cellarets. Here we have what we hope could possibly be a Tiffany mosaic plaque in a sort of a cathedral frame. Anyway, a quick run into the main room because you'll notice Neely and Chip still wandering around. We're still in the process of setting it up. It's very loaded, so I suggest you be at this sale, whoever's watching. We have Asian, we have mid-century modern, we have a wonderful selection of paintings, we have inlaid furniture. Like I said earlier, we have Regency furniture, we have this beautiful Regency leather top desk here. We have a lot of chandeliers, as you'll see on the walls, magnificent art contemporary furniture. We have a very large collection of bronzes. <coughs> we have great lighting. I'm not even going to dare to go into the back room because Nan is still fixing it up, but just get a quick look in there and you'll get an idea of how much stuff we've managed to put together for the next sale. With that and before I hand you for a more detailed description from Bruce, Neelia, Whitney and Keen, I'll bid you adieu and hopefully see you here on October the 27th at 12 p.m. Thanks, Ron. I'm going to start my walkthrough today with this solar lamp, antique solar or astro lamp, original mushroom shade in good condition. And here, just to show you, always popular, three Jaeger LeCoultre Atmos clocks out of three different estates, all in unused, nearly new condition, but vintage. We have a nice selection of Chinese items, antique Chinese items in this upcoming sale this Sunday. Here's a jade and bronze lamp. This might be mid 20th century with snail, a snail base and a turtle, jade turtle up here. Quite a nice lamp. But here's an antique Chinese decorated bronze mounted lamp that was made into a lamp at least at the turn of the century. Nice dragon design if you can see it. And here one of two Sang de Boeuf vases. This one drilled as a lamp. I'll show you the other one in a few minutes. And some very nice cloisonne. Here a pair of Meiji antique silver wire cloisonne urns made into lamps probably in the 1960s in really mint condition other than the, the drill hole in the bottom. And a little later, but equally fine work, is this cloisonne lamp with the red foil background. Another antique Chinese vase mounted as a lamp out of an apartment in Manhattan. Enamel decorated. And here, Steve, two shelves, two different lots of Rose Mandarin China. This lot has a pretty rare cider jug with a strap handle. This is a brush pot with a beautiful 19th century carved hardwood top. Anyway, two lots. You can see the details on our website. We have the lid for the cider pitcher here. And away from Chinese for one moment, is really a great lot of mid-century, mostly mixed metal, tax co. This is a fun little dish marked on the back. We couldn't make out the, the maker on it. 
And it comes with this probably German or Austrian Taza with little mice or rats, I think little mice holding it up with these long legs and tails. One tail's broken, but I, it doesn't matter. It's such a cool little thing. Anyway, a nice lot there. Cinnabar and cloisonne, kind of mid 20th century. We have a huge grouping of Yadros. If you can look on our website, we have some very big ones and then smaller ones that we're selling in lots of two and three. Very generous lots. And in this showcase, most of this out of North Stamford, a very rare Tiffany pottery vase. And here a Weller Sicard pinch top vase. And here are two pieces of Tiffany Favreal glass, both in good condition. This bud vase with the, the twisted bulbous center and the intaglio cut ed uh, border on this bowl. And here, out of the same house, a really rare Tiffany Studios original finish linen fold gilt bronze table lamp in the abalone pattern. It's missing a few bits of abalone. You can see that on our website, but all original cord sockets, everything finish, all original, no breaks to the linen fold glass, a pretty rare item. I hope it does well. And on this shelf, miscellaneous let's see we've got a chinese jade lot here including these three discs and this little pendant they come with hard hardwood little bases that they sit on out of our north stamford house not so old but a beautiful quality jade scepter maybe 1970 something like that and here another lot of chinese items including this beautiful this is really a beautiful jade pendant or disc with bats on it, another piece of jade, an amber water coupe and a little jade or hard stone bracelet. Here are two rose mandarin plaques, antique. You can see those. And just down here, two more pieces of from the same house of Tiffany abalone, including the little postal scale, which is hard to come by, and the note, note clip and the blotter ends. A wonderful collection of antique chi Chinese things, including this seated enameled bronze Quan Yin, I hope. And here, a pair. One is damaged and one is very good, but these are antique ones. Tea dust, tea dust vases in typical Chinese style and shape. And just an assortment of interesting Chinese things from the same house near Bedford. Little, a little signed snuff bottle here, porcelain. This is a tray lot. Some Peking glass, I think. Another snuff bottle. Just a nice lot. A, nice, a beautifully decorated pair of Chinese ginger jars with their lids. With the double circle bottom not drilled, an antique uh, oxblood or flambe vase, Chinese vase, very good condition. And from the Tiffany house, a nice lot of Favreal. The shade's cracked, but the base is perfect. The little, little pinched shot glasses are perfect. Just a nice lot. More Chinese from our house near Bedford. Oh, and this is from the same house. I have high hopes for this one. This is an a, a cloisonne and gilded bronze figure. It's coming loose from the base. You can see that it's very old. It's coming loose from the base here, which is nothing. It seems to be in very good condition with the cloisonne work. And here, Stephen, a sort, well here, from our Tiffany house, a beautiful Femme Noir vase signed on the bottom. You can see the the uh, details on our website it was mounted as a lamp. I took it apart and it comes with this really early, I think really early cinnabar vase, uh, beautifully carved. It's got a little loss here that's mentioned on our website. And out of a house in Greenwich, it's probably the best sewing box that I've seen. It's all staghorn and then engraved or bone 
bone-covered interior. It's complete. Well, there we go. Even right down to the original bottom and little horn border here. Really a fantastic German or Austrian. Also German or Austrian is a little naughty bronze. I forget the artist's name. It's a bronze and ivory figure. And you lift, lift her up and she's nude in there. Uh, he's quite a famous sculptor. You can see the details on our website. And from a house right down here in Mamaroneck, a Chinese scroll painting. I don't know if you'll have enough yeah, space to see this. I hope this is an old one. It's been remounted in the 70s. We'll find out soon enough, but I think it has good potential. So here, Steve, is a lot that I particularly like out of an estate in Greenwich is a lot of antique children's furniture, certainly French, including this little bench, a matched pair of these little armchairs with bow, ribbon and bow crests, all in old white paint. So there's two of these, and then a turn of the century or 1920s, very good quality, single cane back and seat armchair and original gray paint. A nice lot there. And here, Steve, is a lot of three. I'm only going to show you this one. This is the best one. Three 19th century tray tables, two including this one with the cats on it, are paper mache, and the other one is toll. You'll see them on our website. But this one's really charming. Good mid 19th century one. Old English label on the back. A 19th century. Jardinier stand. It's got a couple of losses and repairs, but I think it's going to be worthwhile to have this one fixed up. And it goes with this scholar's table, little writing table, which I think is also missing a little piece of trim right here. But I think worth, worth fixing them up. And here in one lot are two hardwood, probably rosewood, Chinese marble top tabarets or urn stands, one lot. And from the same house, an antique hardwood palace chair, I guess, inlaid with mother of pearl, back in cedar, brown, red marble. It's a little loose, needs a little glue, but it's complete and a good original finish. Nice antique chair. And off of Chinese for one minute is a Victorian modern Gothic corner stand, original gilding and paint. Certainly Herder Brothers made this kind of furniture and Kimball and Cabus and several other makers. I hope there's still some, some people interested in the modern Gothic movement. This one's pretty neat and clean. Just a cross section, Steve, a beautiful pair of bronze sconces with little birds, ribbon and bow tops and birds and flame shades. Gilded mirrors. They need, the other one needs some work, but a beautiful pair of Baker, ebonized Baker chests, mid-century. We have at least three 19th century, late 18th, early 19th century Trumo mirrors with original glass and paint. This one's particularly nice with that classical scene with doves and the cherub. A little antique oak 18th century Georgian chest of drawers here on bracket feet. And here, Steve, two, two very nice pair. Here's a pair of probably French Restoration bronze candelabras, two patina, gilt and patinated. But here's an exceptional pair in good condition, bronze gilded and marble bases and plinths. Sort of Egyptian revival, I'd say. A nice pair. And in original paint, it's a little flaked up, but a stencil decorated ottoman. I've seen two of these before. I'm not sure who made them, maybe Potier and Stymus. But anyway, an interesting ottoman. And if I can just end my segment with this massive and beautiful arts and crafts 
fireplace set, and including the original log basket, which has little trifid or duck feet, the tools and tool holder. I guess it's missing a brass ball here on top, but it has its original crossbar with this sort of intertwined roping. It's a beautiful and large set, hard to come by. And that'll, and that'll wrap it up for me today, and I'll turn it over to Neelia. We hope to see you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. The first painting I want to talk about today is this wonderful oil on canvas by Francis Picabia. Here we have a painting done probably between 1902 and 1908, when Picabia was working in this post-impressionist or impressionist style. Uh, he's most known for his abstract, surrealist works. So this is one of the more traditional pieces uh, that he's done. And we have a wonderful view of the Seine River. We've got some figures here walking along and a figure in the boat. Beautiful use of color and light. We have this estimated at fifteen to twenty-five thousand dollars. Uh, very historically important work for the artist um, when he was in this more traditional phase. We also do have an accompanying copy of the original receipt. It was purchased from GM Lotinga in London in the 1950s for about $615. So interesting to see the conversion of value there. The next two pieces I want to mention are small etchings by Stanley William Hayter. They're being sold as a lot together and you can see both pencils signed. One has a nice dedication. Uh, these are from 1945. So good early works. He's known for his very abstract, also surrealist style, and one of the most prolific printmakers of the 20th century. From nearly the same period as the haters, we have this work by Howard Schleter. Now this is what the artist calls an oil glaze, and it's done on paper. Uh, it appears to be a very thin layer of oil paint that's then been etched or worked in with the uh, back of the artist's brush. So you see really great lines and technique. Um, there's an inscription on the back that actually says vanishing diagonal, so I think it was a gallery's description um, of the artist's technique. This is called Campo Santo. Uh, he's a regionalist New Mexican artist known for wonderful regional landscapes of the area. So I think a rather important work that came from a home uh, in Westchester. Here we have a very unique etching in Aquatint by George Brock. It's a very unusual scene. We have a still life. Um, often you see his prints or, or faces or more cubist style pieces. Here we have just the outline of a bowl of flowers, a bouquet of flowers. Uh, what's unique about this is it's from an edition of 20. So there are actually only 20 of these printed. Uh, and from what I understand, possibly only one like this has come to auction in the past. So a bit brittle and toned, so it needs a little bit of, of love and care, but a, a nice unique etching at, at 8 to 1200. From the same estate as the Stanley, Stanley William Haters comes this work by Robert Hellman. And Hellman was actually a Romanian-born uh, Parisian painter from the Parisian school, abstract expressionist, as you can see, rather prolific uh, and quite talented. Some of his works actually reflect Hebrew lettering, uh, and then he later went on to do more organic tree forms. So we have a piece like that here. Uh, this actually was purchased originally uh, in 1992, I believe, from Christie's, and we have all of the old labels and sale information still on the back of the painting. From the same estate as the Hellman and the Haters comes this work. And this is by Ichtak Tarke, very well-known household name, Serbian-born uh, Israeli painter. And this is from the probably from the 1980s. It's signed only in Hebrew on the lower right and more painterly than some of the later works where he became a little bit more commercial, I, I guess I could say. Uh, but this one has a really nice feel to it, but still very typical of his day-to-day uh, -day scenes of women seated in cafes and chairs uh, with textured backgrounds. Down below it, we have a work by Lloyd McNeil. I just think this is such a wonderful uh, kind of cubist style painting, probably done in the 1960s. McNeil was an African-American artist, also a musician, jazz musician, working out of Washington, D.C. And this comes from a home in Mount Vernon. Uh, the original owner 
was very much involved in civil rights, traveled all over the country in the 1960s, probably knew McNeil at some point. Uh, we, ha we have two other works by McNeil in this sale, including a, a watercolor and an ink wash of musicians. But this one I think is just very special. This antique oil on canvas came to us last week from a home in Long Island. Nice layer of dirt and grime on the painting, so I'm hoping you may be able to see it in the video. Uh, if not, you'll have to come in on, uh, over the weekend. But it could be as early as 18th century uh, or before. It, we have two hunting dogs seizing a swan. Very difficult to make out, but a really nice landscape in the background. Some foliage in here. Uh, and what I think is interesting is this is probably signed right here in the dog's collar. And judging by some of the interest that we have on the internet so far, I think somebody may have ID'd it. Um, I've struggled <laughs> with that signature. It's so very small, but I think this is a very nice painted work, uh, nicely painted work, and should do some money if somebody can figure out uh, who painted it. Up above my head is a work by William Skilling. Now he is a decorative painter, 20th century, did these large, uh, basically reproductions of 19th century works. So here we have two playful dogs. A lot of these were sold at department stores such as Bloomingdale's. Uh, this one signed in the lower right corner, but a really nice, uh, good quality reproduction, uh, probably mid 20th century, estimated only six to $900. So a nice big decorative painting for not a lot of money. The American artist Francis Hopkinson Smith uh, did quite a lot of work in charcoal. Now he was also known as an engineer, an author, kind of a renaissance man. Uh, this work here is actually of Madison Square. So we have a nice early New York scene, early 20th century, really well executed. I think the details and all the figures in here are just so wonderful, uh, kind of that post-impressionist feeling. Unfortunately, the condition is quite rough. Uh, we have quite a bit of foxing and toning to the sheet. But this work is being sold as one of a pair. We have another one called the Willow Tree uh, that you have to come in to see. There are so many great paintings in this sale, but the last one I'm gonna give you a peek at today is this one by Frederick Pickersgill. Pickersgill was a British 19th century painter known for many of his historical and biblical scenes uh, and also genre painting. So here we have uh, the latter, a genre scene. And this one's called Jealousy. So as you can see, we have a courting couple here with uh, another jealous maiden in the background. And I just think the facial expression there is so wonderful. Uh, you can tell he really was an illustrator and he's captured the details, not just in the, the faces, but also uh, the textures of the garments, the silk, the velvet, uh, just excellently painted, probably done in the mid 19th century. This is going up with a four to $6,000 auction estimate. So we really appreciate you coming by and watching the video. Keen's gonna take over and show you some of the mid-century. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Neil. We have a great selection of mid-century once again, a very rare and important sale. And I'll start, as usual, up front with this bronze sculpted uh, mixed metal silent sandal signed mushroom form coffee table, great elongated glass on the top of that. Amazing condition, perfect polished. And right behind that we have an unidentified but probably important uh, mid-century sofa, missing cushions. It came out of an estate in New Rochelle, great mid-century house that had a ton of original Paul Macabre that I will show you in one second. Uh, this is a beautiful couch with the angled arms, uh, tapered wooden legs, a great look to that. Uh, and as I mentioned, the Paul Macabre estate in New Rochelle, we have this very early and important Paul Macabre piece, a 10 drawer, two door, the iron painted legs with some minor losses but in great original condition. Alongside that in the second lot is a pair of end tables, um, both the same with the bamboo uh, strapping on the upper tier, great walnut top and lower shelf on that. And that's a pair of them in one lot. More Palma Cobb here, a audio cabinet on a base. This does detach. Uh, the only condition issue with this is a man-made uh, audio a speaker hole cut out of the side later, uh, purchased in the 1950s uh, and probably modified around the same time. Uh, moving right along, we have many more pieces. Aero Saarinen, that orange chair right there. Three Aero Saarinen chairs with, along with a knoll. Office chair, as you can see, chrome, walnut desk. A nice 
Eames, early Eames rocker for Herman Miller. Uh, the upholstery is in not the greatest condition, but the shell underneath is in amazing condition. No chips, cracks, or all, any of the above. I'll take you over here, Steve, to one of the best pieces in the mid-century selection is a rare and important Pavo Tynel chandelier with a little floral mesh form. Um, all the candle holders are, and the light holders are just in great condition. It's a beautiful piece, and I'm glad we have in this sale. It should do very well. Behind that, as I mentioned before, some more mid-century seating, a three-piece sectional sofa, a null walnut and chrome a coffee table, chrome coffee table, glass top, and behind me here, two of my top three is the Aero Serin Fernal womb chair with original ottoman, original cushionings. A little bit of a petrification to the back, but the fabric is in amazing condition. Minus one very minute, hardly even noticeable hole to that. Uh, from that same estate, a great mid-century house in Greenwich, we have a Laverne table, Laverne coffee table, bronze and, and uh, mixed bronze on top. It is signed right there, a little hard to make out from slight wear, but it is the Chan table, a recognizable and noticeable piece from Laverne uh, in the early 50s. Out of a Bronx estate, this is an early Christian Sorensen, a lounge chair, nice quality with the original upholstery. It does have an ottoman that connects to this brass bar here and tilts back freely. Very comfortable, very nice Danish make on that. And over here we have the ottoman that I just mentioned, upside down. This one also folds up, signed for Gorm Mobler on the bottom. And these two pieces are also from the Macabre Estate. Uh, Amazing two-piece original fabric, walnut, uh, possibly teak, two-piece sectional sofa. Really gorgeous. Uh, two-piece needs almost no work. Uh, maybe a slight cleaning, but this is good to go. Uh, and the last piece that I'll show you here is a pair from the Greenwich Estate again. A pair of reupholstered pony hair, French mid-century armchairs, lounge chairs uh, by Pierre Garouche. Beautiful uh, provenance to this, highly identifiable, nice important pair here. So those, so those are a few of the many lots of mid-century that we have. We hope to see you all at the sale October 27th, and I'll shoot you over to Whitney now. Thank you. Thank you, Keen, and I'll be presenting a selection of jewelry and sterling in our upcoming October 27th auction. Starting with this Men's Oyster Perpetual Date Rolex from a local Westchester estate, and moving on to this three-piece gold lot, starting with this gold and diamond cocktail ring, and moving on to this gold brooch with citrines and diamonds. And last in this lot is an unusual 14 karat yellow gold and diamond brooch. A really great piece in the sale is this diamond and platinum ring. The two center diamonds weigh a little over two carats each, one being color M with VS1 clarity, and the second stone with color L and VS2 clarity. They're surrounded by six round brilliant cut diamonds and 14 single cut diamonds. This comes from a local Westchester estate and the estimate is 12 to 15,000. One of our multi-piece jewelry lots in this auction is this Asian themed lot, which includes cinnabar, blue and white, jade, a lot of really great pieces in this lot. And there's also a second lot of similar style jewelry and many, many pieces in that lot. Out of a local Westchester estate is this four-piece serving piece lot. Starting with this Alvin Manufacturing Company's ladle, it does have a, a nice figural handle with a floral and foliate design to the bowl. A J. Einstein coin silver serving piece with a nice gilded bowl and etched design. And next is an S. Kirk and Son serving piece with a nice pierced bowl. And last but not least in this lot is an English fish serving piece with a, a very beautiful design to the blade. Out of another Westchester estate, we do have a great collection of Tiffany & Company sterling, starting with this large oval serving tray. And moving on to this large Tiffany & Company meat tray. From the same estate is this oval open 
pierced basket. And if you take a look, there is a great griffin design to the handles. And next up from the same Westchester estate is this beautiful water pitcher with a nice floral repousé design. And if you take a look around the bottom, there is this nice hand hammered finish. Also an interesting aspect of this pitcher is this monogram that you see on the side. Really a beautiful piece with undetermined maker's mark on the bottom. It is a bit worn, but it is a beautiful quality piece. We do have a few pieces of Jensen in this sale, starting with this grape motif centerpiece bowl. And moving on to this teapot with a nice floral and, and foliate finial, a really great piece. And moving on to this large acorn pattern flatware Jensen set. It does have many ser serving pieces and it weighs approximately 101 troy ounces, not including any of the pieces with stainless blades. And last but not least for our sterling is this Mexican tea set. It is out of a local Harrison estate, a nice Mexican tea set with seven pieces. And that wraps it up for our October 27th preview, and we hope to see you at our sale. Thank you.